Are the Dallas Cowboys a better team now than they were at this time last year? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Lena McCool. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, how's it going today, sir? It's Friday, which, uh, you know, it's great. Usually we, we have a game preview these days, but since we're on a bye week, it's it's lots of fun. It's just we're, we're relaxing, and we're having a very rare, I would say, at least nowadays, uh, Friday questions day, which yes. is just going to be a great time, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I don't even know the last time we did this, but we got a lot of good questions. Let's dive right into it. Landon, believe it or not, last year, coming out of week nine, Cowboys had a record of six and two. <gasps> Cowboys coming out of week nine this year are going to have a record of six and two. So our first question from Roberto, pretty simple. Is this a better team than last year? <clears throat> I think it's hard to answer, honestly. I think it's, I, I, this one's tough. Because I think <clears throat> we knew more about this team this point last year, right? Because I think you, you had seen more of Dak uh, you know, you, you, the, the stuff that had happened at certain points, uh, you know, uh, Dak coming back from his injury, uh, Dak dealing with, uh, uh, you know, the, the injury at the end of the game of New Orleans, uh, of New England. New England, yep. Uh, and, and, and so you kind of had uh, uh, your hands around, okay, the strengths and weaknesses as they exactly are. You knew what your – you kind of had an idea what your defense was at that point. Um, you know, you felt you felt good about your offense, but I think what we ended up finding out is that the the floor kind of fell out of the offense uh, in the second half of the season. Part of it was Dak, part of it was a variety of other things. So injuries um, that happened, yeah, yeah, injuries for, it, was definitely part of it. Week ten, that's the game they played Atlanta, yep. one forty three yep. three. So coming out of week ten, we felt awesome about this yep. team. Yep. Uh, and then as the season started to go on, you know, injuries took hold and some other things, and it started kind of go downhill from there. So I, I would say that it's, it's, I would say that we knew more about this team last year than we do about this team now, because just because we've missed so much time with Dak, we've only really gotten one game back where the offense felt like it was kind of back into sync and where, where it needed to be. And it didn't it still didn't have like all, you know, the, the components that it no, probably normally would. Um, so I, I think there's because of the unknown on offense uh, it's difficult to know overall whether whether these t- teams better than. But I will say this: this defense is 100 percent still better, way better than it was well, last year. Let's let's do this just really really quickly to kind of see where we're at. Um, let's go by position by position. Tell me whether yeah, we yeah. felt better about them now or back week nine of last year. Quarterback. Ba- better. I feel better about. It. I, I I think Dak is is picked up where he left off, and He's we don't have to worry about now than he was yeah. at this point last year. Yeah, um, absolutely. Running back, I feel better if only just for usage reasons. That I mean, Zeke. I mean, this is going to sound really weird. Zeke just missed the game, but Zeke is actually healthier now than he was at this he time was, last is, year, yeah. right? Um, and Pollard's playing better. He just is. Um, wide receiver, I think, undeniably. I think wide receiver is the is, is the obvious position that That's that the, they are not where they are. Right. Last year. And part of the reason that they declined on offense last year. Uh, after week 11 was because of the receivers, right? CD missed a game in the half with a concussion. Amari missed three because of his vaccination status. Uh, Michael Gallup was just getting back from the calf injury. He would end up getting hurt later in the year. Um, so we felt better about it in week nine and week 10. But as we know, things got a little hairy for them. Tight end. Uh, better. I mean, better. Even though Schultz is banged up, better yeah, now. Absolutely uh, better. This is one that's going to be tough. Offensive line. Offensive line's different. You know, I think that this is a uh, – I think basically what you did is you flipped the percentages on offense, uh, pass blocking and run blocking, right? Yeah. Like last year was a better pass protecting team. 
uh, and much worse run protecting team. This is a much better run blocking unit. Uh, they still are kind of finding their way as pass protectors. I would say last year, just because you had Tyron and Lyle and Terrence Steele as a backup, you just had more depth and your starters were better. And you had Connor Williams. I don't know. I, I think having Terrence Steele playing is that helps. I don't know. It's just that, it's, that's better. You have Steele and Tyron, and you have Connor Williams, and you have Connor McGovern at back. I'll take last year's unit. That's fair. Okay. Uh, defensive but line. I will say that Siler Biotish is significantly better this year than he yes. was last year. So. Without a doubt. Uh, yeah. Defensive uh, line. No doubt it's better this year. Yeah. Even though that team had Gregory, which, I mean, Gregory was still awesome for them last year. I think you just feel better about where Mike is. Dorrance is playing better. Probably most importantly, you have a healthy Demarcus Lawrence, where at this time last year, Lawrence wasn't playing because of the, the broken bone in his foot. So well, and I think the talent is more spread out. So that means it's the defensive line in general is more reliable. You know, yeah. I, I just think that you you've got so many more talented players that losing one here or there is not yeah. going to f- cause issues like it did previously. Linebackers better, right? Like, I, I, I mean, I definitely think, at this point. Now, I would say yeah. Van Der Esch played really well at the end of the season last year. Sure. Um, yeah, but he's playing a, about the same right now. Um, we'll see. I think that's that's a win for Dallas corners it's tough because of jordan lewis being out Mm -hmm. i think that trayvon diggs is playing as good as he was last year if not better which is hard to say because of the interceptions total but i think he's just not you know he's not uh, having to give up up. he's not giving up as much as he had to yeah exactly despite what happened kind of against chicago i I would say the cornerback room was better last year. I thought Brown was better last year, and you had Jordan Lewis. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, Sa- yeah. Safeties, when the Cowboys' safeties are healthy, they're better than they were last year. Absolutely, yeah. It's just yeah. they've been a little banged up. So hmm. fairly similar, uh, maybe a little bit better on the offensive line and wide receiver for last year's team, better on defense for this year's team. I think they're similar. Um, so we'll see. I think the places where they're drastically where there's drastic changes is you know I think the wide receiver may be you could consider a drastic downgrade yes. but I think for most of the other drastic changes that have been made they've been positive towards this 22 20, 2022 team which is why I tend to lean on this potentially let's put it this way <clears throat> I know hindsight is 2020 but I feel better about this team going into the later part of the season than I think uh, I do that team last year. Is it because of Dak's health? I think it's because of Dak's health and because I think this team is built better to win in the playoffs than it was last year. And there's all the, also this illusion of hope with Tyron Smith. Like if you can get Tyron back in December and you have Tyler Smith playing left guard, that you're really going to be able to move guys off the line of scrimmage and run the ball. Well, and I also think, look, that you know, even without Tyron Smith, I, I think you know the, the worst case scenario is that you continue to just have Connor McGovern to be in there who's playing better football and, and kind of developing a little bit. So yeah, I, I, I mean, it's not what it was last year. I mean, no. but I think the idea is, but last year you had Tyron Smith kind of barely limping across the finish line. And, and now you're hoping to get him, you know, back from an injury, but at least not with a whole bunch of snaps on him for this season. So it's just different. That's all. All right, let's get to some more questions. But yeah. before we do that, we want to tell you about prediction strike. This episode is brought to you by Prediction Strike, the world's first sports stock market. You can now invest in professional athletes just like stocks. It's a lower risk alternative to sports betting, and athlete prices move based on performance and supply and demand. So if you invested in Jalen Hurts like a year ago, you'd be up 48.2% in your profile right now. You can invest in four sports, including NFL, UFC, NBA, MLB. Everyone knows that you should be investing. Why not invest in something that you actually know about, like football? Download the Prediction Strike, Strike app and use promo code LOCK for a free share when you sign up and make a first deposit of $20 or more. That's promo code LOCK for a special one-time giveaway. Prediction Strike will choose one person who uses that promo code, again, LOCKED, and makes a deposit. They will give somebody 100 free random shares that could be worth like up to $4,000 if you get lucky and get like a Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen share. Invest in what you know on Prediction Strike, the stock market for sports. 
We also want to tell you about Built Bar. You guys know Built Bar. They've got some new flavors that you need to try. Cookie dough topper, cookie or coconut brownie bar, and coconut brownie topper. They mm. also have white chocolate peppermint granola. It's Built's take on granola bar, and it's so filling and insanely tasty. And for the holidays, of course, they're going to have the candy cane brownie puff, which little candy cane sprinkles on the top. It's really, really good. If you haven't tried Built Bars before, they are literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. Uh, I just got two new packages of a toffee almond sitting down on my kitchen table <laughs> Ooh, right that now. Sounds good. Had, yeah, had one for lunch. Really good. 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories. Only 130 calories. Just sink your teeth into that first bite, and your life will be changed forever. You've got to try them right now. Go try, again, my favorite, the Toffee Almond. Get 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at built.com. That is promo code LOCKEDON15 at built.com. All right, Landon, let's get to uh, some more questions. This one from Gorn. He wants to know, in the long term, who do you feel more confident in, Deron Bland or Calvin Joseph? Well, I think right now it's hard. It's hard not to, to say Deron Bland. I mean, I think that he's come in and, and just been able to, you know, flatten the curve of, of his learning curve and 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 do everything that's been required of him. I mean, I think for obviously there's a reason that he's in as opposed to kicking uh, Anthony Brown inside and then put Kelvin Joseph in. And I don't think it's just because they don't want to move Anthony nope. Brown. Um, I think it, that that Bland is probably better at his position than Kelvin Joseph is as an outside corner. Um, I haven't given up on Kelvin Joseph though yet. Uh, I, you know, I think he's he's developed into a incredible special teamer, and I think that that will translate to better defensive play. At least he's uh, getting it, him on the field compared to last yeah. year, right? And 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 look, I mean, I understand that there was a touchdown scored on him, but if you watched all the snaps, he played mostly pretty well. And 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 on that touchdown play, the, the, you know, he was in position and made a play on the ball. It just didn't work out, you know. And and that's going to happen sometimes when you play cornerback. So. Uh, I think he still has all the skill set to get there. I just think that Deron Bland is more comfortable right away doing what they're asking him to do versus what they would ask Kelvin Joseph to do. I, I think it's Bland pretty easily for me. It's just the Cowboys trust him more. I've seen him play multiple games now, better than what I've ever seen Kelvin Joseph play. Um, and I think there's a trust factor there. I think the Cowboys trust sure. Deron Bland sure. to be in the right spot and do the things that he's supposed to do. I, I'm like, yeah, I haven't completely given up on Calvin Joseph yet, but I mean, I would be shocked if Bland ever gives up. I don't want to say his starting spot, but his spot on the roster over Joseph. Like, just, I, yeah. don't, I don't see it happening. I, I would just say this that I think the Bland is like, is kind of was way more ready made to go. I think what's, what, we're, what we're concerned about with Joseph is, is he going to bust? And I have at least seen improvement from Joseph this year. And I think yeah, that's even if it's just on special teams, right? Yeah. And I, I think, I mean, but I think that that's a huge thing, right? Like, because yep. it's about the physicality. It's about tackling. Uh, it's about, you know, understanding assignments. So I, I think that mm -hmm. those are, you know, getting good on special teams. It's, it doesn't, you know, translate obviously to the defense right away. But I think that it, it bodes well for his overall, you know, usefulness to this team and, and his future moving forward. I, I look forward to season three of Kelvin. Joseph. Uh, next one from Gorn. Had another really good question. Removing Brandon Cooks entirely, does the Cooks trade interest foreshadow a type of wide receiver the Cowboys are looking for as a complement to Lamb, or was this just a right time, right place kind of push? That's a good question. I, I honestly am not one hundred percent sure. Um, I. I think that I think that it could be a little bit of both. Uh, I, I think that you know, there there were obviously other wide receivers that are out there on the market, and so there's a reason that we you know specifically heard uh, Brandon Cook's name as the one that kind of was kicked around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think that there is something to the idea that they have you know se uh, several of a kind of similar type of wide receiver at the top of their uh, wide receiver depth chart. So it, it, they are definitely potentially in the market of looking for a different type of wide receiver. I just think that that's also something that's changed a little bit this year and maybe that's why they are kind of going that route right it seems like previous to this they had no problem with collecting 
multiple wide receivers of a type, which is why you ended up with so many wide receivers of, right. of a type, right? But they, in the offseason, they signed James Washington, and you can say what you want about James Washington, about his effectiveness. He's definitely a different type of wide receiver than the rest of these guys. Uh, Bre- then what's the next uh, thing to fall? Brandon Cooks, you know, potentially being a trade target. Definitely a different type of wide receiver than the rest of these guys. So I think there's something to the idea that the Cowboys are at least now more interested in kind of exploring different body types at wide receiver. I mean, like Cal- uh, Turpin is another guy, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but I think that it's it's not like they are uh, like that they're desperately trying to go out and get that body type. I think they're just more open to getting that body type I if they can if it can help them. I think they realize that they need a little bit more speed on offense. Like CD Lamb's a really good player, but his game is not a speed based game, right? It's just not. Neither is Michael Gallup. Noah Brown certainly isn't that player. James Washington's he's a deep threat without long speed, which is kind of an oxymoron. Well, uh, that's Gallup too, frankly. I, I mean. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it is. Semi Fahoku kind of has that build up speed, but he can't stay healthy and he's raw. Jalen Tolbert's a four five athlete. I think they are looking for somebody that can run good routes and can take the top off the defense a little bit. I think that was Cooks. I also wouldn't rule out the idea of Cooks maybe being a cowboy next year. Like it seems like it seems like if things aren't going to work out in Houston and he doesn't want to be back next year, maybe this offseason you could make a trade for Cooks and rework his salary and give him some more guaranteed money and do some things there. I'm I'm not ruling that out. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I wonder if the Cowboys' taste for that changes by the end of the year, right? Uh, like if they start to kind of fall back into, well, let's wait and see what Tolbert does in and the offseason. Sort of it's possible. Yeah, so we'll see. But I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I also wouldn't be surprised if they continued to try to target either Cooks or someone of a similar body type. Next question from at Jones's babysitter: Are there any matchups left in the schedule that will give good insights on where the Cowboys stand going into the playoffs? If the Eagle game doesn't matter, it seems slim. I am interested in what teams we do or do not match up well against. I actually have their schedule pulled up, and to me, there's two games that I'm really circling. Both road one. games. Yeah, Go ahead. That really. What's yours? Well, mine off the top of my head that just pops up immediately is Minnesota. That, right? That's you play, the first one, right? At you Minnesota. Play, yeah. You play at Minnesota. They've got a similar record to you. They're they're having a really good season so far. They've really improved their team a lot. They're definitely loading up for a playoff run. I think that's a clear, you know, equal footing two contenders teams going at it yes. on a in a major NFC, you know playoff implication game right i mean and it's very very likely if the cowboys were to be like the five or six seed and they win that first playoff game that they would go to minnesota in round two you know and have to play on the vikings so that's absolutely one it's also a really good matchup for the cowboys that measure themselves because yeah they're one of these teams that's really balanced on offense they can throw it just as well as they can run it they've got two pass rushers in zadarius smith and uh daniel hunter They've got a couple big run-stopping defensive tackles, Dalvin Tomlinson. Um, this will be a tough one. Like that, I know the Cowboys have had a lot of luck against Minnesota in the past with backup quarterbacks, but this team is so much better than we've seen oh, over yeah. the last couple of years. This is not the same team that we saw two was it two years ago or was it last year? Cooper last Rush year, beat yeah. Last year, yeah. It was Andy it, Dalton is... beat him in 2020. <laughs> that's right. Jeez, I forgot about Andy Dalton doing it too. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. I, I and, and Minnesota's obviously. I mean, look, the Minnesota fans hate Cowboys fans, and it's yeah. a long. This is a fifty-year longer, long-running hate for Cowboys fans. So uh, they're going to be hyped up. They're going to be excited. And you know, look, the other thing too to consider on that game is that you're going to be coming off of a very emotional game, having played uh, at Green Bay uh, yep. against Green Bay. So it, it's it's. It's going to be very. It's going to be a, a very difficult game. I, I would also just throw in that I don't think the Eagles game is not going to be uh, for nothing for them. You know, I, I mean, I think there's a chance that there's a chance that that could be the case. Uh, but I think that if they go into that game undefeated. It's they're not going to watch. They're not no. going to want Dallas to spoil no. that. I don't imagine. Absolutely. So Absolutely not. they're going to try. So point. yeah, I, I think that, that that I understand the thought process that that the Eagles are in a spot where they may not be catchable to win the NFC East championship at that point. But it's still going to matter for Philly. But right? it's still going to matter for yeah. Philly. Yeah, right. it's not. It's right. not Week 18 really. Even it's still Week 15, 16, if I'm not mistaken. So Week 16. Yeah. Well, and yeah. it's a Christmas Eve game. Like it's a, yeah. it's a it's a big game. 
Uh, I'll give you yeah. one more. It's actually the following week. So it's kind of a weird schedule. So the Cowboys play on Saturday, Christmas Eve, which, by the way, did you know that the NFL is doing like their whole slate of games, uh, like their Sunday slate of games on Saturday on Christmas Eve? And then on Sunday, I think they just have two games. So it's going to be weird to have like 12 NFL games on a Saturday. Uh, but So the Cowboys play on Saturday. Then they play on Thursday, the 29th, in Tennessee against the Titans. I know that probably a lot, not a lot of people watch the Titans, but they're five and two. They've won That's five straight team, games. Man. Mike Vrabel is an awesome coach, and they can really, really run the ball. And their defensive line is really good. It's just another one of those games. Like, okay, Cowboys, if you want to show that you're physically tough and that you can win a game against a really mentally and physically tough team, here's the Titans on the road after Christmas. Yeah, and if you guys don't already know his name. I would start learning the name of, of Jeffrey Simmons, yeah. right? Like oh. he, he is the uh, small market Aaron Donald of the he's league. Unbelievable. He's basically unblockable at times. He's a very, very difficult player to play against. So, And, and the yes. other guys they have, Danico Autry, Bud Dupree, like they're big athletic physical guys. It makes it really hard to run on them. So that'll be another game. Uh, it, we'll see what the Cowboys have to play for at that point because I think that's the second to last game of the season for them. It's just it'll be a measuring stick game a little bit for them, so keep an eye on that one. Uh, all right, we uh, got one more question that I want to get to, uh, talking about some tight ends, Landon. But before we do Ooh. that, I'll tell you guys about LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be a hundred percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and most importantly, for free. All you have to do is add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Last question here. So people want to know about a comment that I had a couple days ago. <laughs> am about... I supposed to, am I gonna comment on your comment? Is that what's sure, about go ahead. I'll, I'll let you go first. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, okay, go ahead. This, Let's hear it. Listen from David. He once said he said you said earlier this week that Peyton Hendershot and Jake Ferguson aren't quite ready to replace Dalton Schultz. Question what do they need to do, improve to be ready? Well, I think Ferguson just needs to I think another year in the in the weight room will get him to a spot where I would feel probably comfortable with him being tight end one. I think his receiving ability for the most part seems to be there. I mean, mm -hmm. um uh I think that you know, we just we just need to see a little bit more consistency. There's times where I feel like Ferguson uh struggles to stay on his feet. Mm -hmm. Um and so, uh, I, but it's just small things I mean considering, right? Uh for Hendershot, you know, look, <laughs> At some point, the refs are going to catch on to what's going on with him, <laughs> and they're going to yeah. start paying attention to what yep. to what he's doing. And so he's he's really got to you know kind of clean up the technique to the point where he's not going to get called. I think it's gotten better for sure. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but he's definitely gotten away with uh, some stuff where he's been more of in a street fight than he has been in a in a blocking scheme. So uh, that's definitely one thing where th he's going to need to clean up a little bit. Uh, you know, I think that the thing about you know. Uh, uh, about Schultz is that you just you're not tipping off the play when he's in the, on the field, right? And and I feel like that that could still exist with Ferguson next year if if you needed it to, but I, I feel like that there's just there isn't quite the balance to each of their games yet that that you can get with Schultz on the field. It's just I think what's shocking is how close they are already in their rookie season. You know, yeah. that, that's the big difference to me. And I also think that this team. You know, we'll want to continue to use multiple tight ends moving forward. So, so, so it's not just enough to replace Schultz. They're going to also have to find someone to replace them. Which maybe that's McEwen, maybe it's not. But I think that that's going to be the other big part of, of replacing that that uh, that production from Schultz. Do you know how many yards Dalton Schultz had with Cooper Rush in four games? Not much. I would say, let's say fifty. 
18. Wow. 18. In five games. In, in the three games with uh, Dak, 62 yards, 49 yards, and then 74 yards against the Bears. One of the things Schultz does really well is just he has such a good feel of like where to settle down in zones and like how to quickly turn his head and snap his hips and be like show Dak that he's open. And unless you're like a top 15 quarterback, it's sometimes hard to see that guy. And you would think, oh, it's just a tight end. Just throw it to him. He's open in the middle of the field. You have to have a lot of trust in your quarterback and be in the right spots. And that's one thing that Dak has with Schultz is he just – he knows where he's going to be, like on a blitz, right? He knows exactly where he's going to be, and he's going to catch it, and he's going to get up the field. I'm not saying Ferguson and Hendershot can't do that or they're not there yet, but it's just one of those things, like, the more you play, it took more Schultz experience. a while. To, yeah, yeah, it exactly. took Schultz a while to do this, like, to learn how to get open when you're not necessarily being covered by everybody, somebody and finding soft spots and knowing when teams are blitzing and reading coverages. They'll get there. They're just not there yet. Well, and it's like you said it too. It's it's not just reading coverages, but reading coverages the way that Dak reads it, right? Exactly. Like if if, yep. he, if you're mid route and you're seeing what's happening, your eyes need to be the same as Dak's eyes, and you need to be seeing the same thing if you're going to be adjusting mid route and expect to get the football. So and you can't just be drifting up the field. And if you see, hey, a slot corner's blitzing, I just I got to turn around right now and present myself open to the quarterback so he doesn't take a hit. Like those are just the little things that aren't necessarily physical. That Ferguson and Hendershot are going to have to learn just the more they play. Which, again, points to exactly how difficult this position is to play, right? You yep. already have to deal with being a wide receiver on passing downs, being a offensive lineman on run downs, and then uh, on top of that, you have to learn all the individual nuance of each of those yes. positions as well. So and it's, and it's, it's really why I, I probably – I'll probably end up being wrong here, but I've been pretty vocal on Twitter. I would love to see the Cowboys franchise Schultz one more year just to give those guys some more time to develop and get used to that because Schultz wasn't ready in year two either. Like it took him until year three to really get the mental part of the game down. I love what I've seen from Ferguson and Hendershot so far. This it just, it takes a bit. That's all. I agree. Yeah. I would, I would say, I would say the same thing. I wouldn't even be upset with the, with the short term two or yeah. three year deal. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with having those all three of those tight ends locked in for a few years, and then once Schultz is done by that time, you would feel probably very confident yes. in, in, in how Ferguson and Hendershot are playing. I, I agree. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reaction, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts, all the same places that you download. Locked on Cowboys podcast. Please check us out on YouTube. Uh, like, subscribe to us over there. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Cowboys. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy this kind of crappy slate of week nine games. Uh, yeah. And we'll be back next week to talk about uh, the Packers Super Bowl. Because the Cowboys no, God. Here in week 10. Oh, boy. Actually, I don't know if you see this, but like the Packer fans are saying, like, hey, it's a one game season now. Just beat McCarthy. That's the only thing we care about. Mike McCarthy did nothing wrong, guys. Uh, Mike I told McCarthy our friend Justice Mosquito, it's going to be so nice to end the Rodgers era in Lambeau. Oh, God. We we started it. We ha we're the only ones. It's like the one ring. We, we, <laughs> we're the ones who started it. We're the only ones who can end it. It's uh, It was forged in the, in the fires of Mountain Dune of, of, of Texas Stadium, and only there can it, it be uh, killed. Well, of course, we're playing in Green Bay, but yeah, either That'd way, be a really works. awesome reference if I ever watched Lord of the Rings. Uh, oh, we'll see you guys God. next time. <laughs>